Remember to turn on all notifications so you don't miss a video. Annie's Lobby and Wano are both arcs that introduced major powers for the monster trio. Annie's Lobby gear 2nd and 3rd, 9 sword style, and Diable Jamb. Wano brought us gear 5th, King of Hell 3 sword style, and Ifrit Jamb. Lobby's power-ups are much more satisfying and better written than Wano's, and in this essay I'll explain why. The first difference between the two sets are the explanations. I'll start with Luffy. In Lobby, Gear 2nd is achieved by pumping his blood at a higher rate thanks to his rubber body. Gear 3rd is achieved by biting into his bone and blowing into it. Both are a little cartoony, but there's still some sense there. 2nd gives him speed, 3rd gives him size. Both of their powers make sense from their explanation. How does Gear 5th compare? This power-up was achieved by Luffy unconsciously unlocking the true nature of his fruit, which is a Zoan, but technically a Paramecia too. His fruit also awakens. What abilities does he get? He becomes cartoonishly malleable. He's able to turn his surroundings into rubber, and he can use bone and muscle inflation without blowing. The only power that makes sense here is turning his surroundings into rubber because we saw the string and mochi fruits awaken in the same way, which are paramecias. Why is he cartoonishly malleable? Why can he use gear 3rd and 4th abilities to a higher degree? It's not explained. Next, Zoro. Kyutoryu allowed Zoro to magically create extra arms and heads with swords, totaling at 9. It doesn't make sense how he has this ability, but One Piece has frequently been loose on its logic for characters without powers. Sometimes it's said that they're illusions, but the illusionary swords have been shown to do damage. Illogical, but cool. Wano gives him an Osantoryu. The explanation is that he imbues armament and conqueror's hockey into his swords, and sometimes uses Kitsunebi Ryu to cut flames. This explanation makes more sense, but the power-up is lame. He just adds hockey to his regular fighting style. The power-up doesn't compare to any of the other characters here, Lobby or Wano. Using hockey as a power-up source, something that many characters have, decreases its ingenuity. Next is Sanji. Diable Jambe is a flaming foot created by the friction of spinning. This is a loosely scientific explanation. Sadly, when the time skip hits, this logic flies out of the window and Sanji can simply ignite his feet at will. Ifrit Jambe is a foot surrounded by blue flames and lightning. It's explained by combining Diable Jambe, hockey, and his German body modifications to take on hotter flames. Well, since the friction startup was removed, this makes less sense. How can he choose how hot his foot gets? Hockey and body mods allowing him to resist more heat is understandable. So are the blue flames. But why is there lightning? Like with Eno, Hockey is used, making it less unique. And when you compare both Jams, Ifrit is just a different colored and stronger version of Diablo. That's a lack of creativity. When it comes to abilities, Gear 2nd and 3rd are better than 5th. 2nd and 3rd each have a specific ability that is favorable in certain situations. 2nd can't do what 3rd does and vice versa. But with the introduction of 4th, the higher gears become transformations that eliminated the use of previous forms. Kinda like Goku's transformations. 2nd and 3rd were specific boosts, which was rare in battle manga and respectable. Many stories opted for Super Saiyan type transformations where everything gets a stat boost. Specific stat boosts were rare. The only other ones I can think of are Dojutsu like Sharingan and Byakugan. But 4th and 5th are like Super Saiyan, but worse. Not only do they increase all stats, they erase the need for previous forms by adopting their new powers. Focusing on 5th, it has the speed of 2nd, bone inflation of 3rd, and muscle inflation of 4th. It's no longer a balanced power-up like 2nd and 3rd. Its powers are also less creative since it's borrowing from the previous forms. The most creative thing is rubber surroundings. Kyutoryu gave Zoro extra blades, which is cool. What did Eno do? It allowed him to fire shockwaves, which is something he was already shown to be capable of. He had Takanami, Pound Ho, and Yakadori before this. In this new style, he can shoot waves with Onigiri and Toragari. But why couldn't he simply do that before? Why is this nonsense being treated like a power-up? Zoro really got the short end of the stick here. Diablo Jamb can do fiery kicks. Ifrit Jamb can do fiery kicks. Very original. Design also plays an important role in power-ups, because they have to look cool. All the gears look cool, although Gear 5th's appearance doesn't make sense. Second is steaming because his blood is boiling from being pumped so fast. Fifth just kinda goes Super Saiyan. His hair becomes fiery white, his clothes turn white, his eyes red, and he gets a scarf of smoke. It looks cool, but it doesn't make sense. Kyutoryu makes Zoro look like Ashura armed with 9 katana. That's cool. Eno Santoryu makes Zoro's swords black, has some black lightning coming out, and has some green fire rings circling around them. That's lame. The lightning comes from hockey, but where do the rings of fire come from? Diablo and Ifrit. Both look cool because it's a flaming foot. 
but Ifrit loses points for copying Diablo. In conclusion, Andy's lobby has better power-ups because of their originality, their sources, their abilities, and their designs. Maybe you're wondering what I wanted or would have done. For gear 5th, the obvious next step would be skin inflation. Many people predicted this, and I expected this. I don't know what powers those would entail, but it wouldn't intrude on the other gears. Maybe it would give him shapeshifting like abilities. Having rubber surroundings is cool too. For Zoro, I don't know, but it probably have to do with him altering his swords in a creative way. Zoro's quirk was always his unusual number of swords. Kyutoryu exaggerated this by tripling his amount. Tripling again would be too derivative, but maybe the concept of illusions could be used in a new way. Maybe he could create illusionary clones, each with three swords. Zoro is tough. For Sanji, my idea has also been predicted, and that would be an ice foot. It's still an elemental foot, but now it looks different, has different purposes, and doesn't replace Diablo. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and help me revolutionize the manga industry by buying my manga and spreading the word. All important links will be in the description.